Greetings, it is I, Tantus Narvan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue our discussion on anime series and using them in your Bessem game. Today I'm going to start with two classic movies from the 80s, and then move on to, of course, some more series from last year, 2015. But let's start with those two movies. First one I want to talk about is Vampire Hunter D, a very popular one from the 80s. Now, it was a series of light novels, and there actually was, were two movies that were produced. I'm focusing on the 1985 version of this movie. So, it's set in a post-apocalyptic after a nuclear holocaust world in the year 12,040 AD. Yes, that far into the future. Now, it's a world where, like, vampire lords have begun to take over large swaths of land and threaten people. Most of the time, people are sort of on their own, but they kind of function as kind of rulers of areas without being direct rulers. We focus on D, who's a Dampir, or half-human, half-vampire, and he is hired by this man in order to protect his daughter from Count Magnus Lee, the lord of the area, who's this vampire that wants to take her, his daughter as one of his brides and make her a vampire, effectively. So then D opposes the Count and goes against his various forces and minions, eventually getting into battle with him, and that is the entire... Of course, I don't want to get into more without spoiling some of the details, which are very interesting and great, that I would recommend this a lot. Anyway, so the genres, of course, are it has a horror tendencies. Now, it is the 1980s, so it doesn't have the kind of horror that we would reflect nowadays, but there's a lot of, you know, gore, blood, D doing horrible things to kill monsters, getting the crap beat out of himself, his ability to heal is much better than a human since he is a damp here, half vampire, so he can put up with a lot of damage himself. It is sci-fi to agree. They have this kind of mixture of like feeling like feudal technology, though mixed with technology that you would think you would see for something so far into the future. This very interesting mix of science and archaicness that makes it a very interesting setting in general. I would also then call it a bit of a romance. The thing is, there's this kind of relationship between Dee and the, and the farmer's daughter that sort of exists and blossoms over the series. And in the end, which I will spoil a little bit, Dee continues his quest to kill the vampires and leaves her behind. Maybe never to return to see her again. We don't know because the movie doesn't hint on this. It just hints at the fact that he has a mission to fight vampires. And no matter how he feels, he must keep going on it. So it is this kind of tragic romance that is actually very poignant and is very enjoyable. I rate this one a five. Of course, it is a classic. If you hear about it, I would recommend seeing it no matter what. Now, when we talk about using it in your Bessem, I would give your characters 500 points. To put them all on sort of an equal footing, make them all a group of Dampir vampire hunters that form a sort of team going around fighting vampires. Now, normally not aren't a lot of Dampirs around anyway, so a unique team of them would be a very powerful threat against many vampires out there. And you could have them go and deal with very dangerous vampires, going on missions here and there, dealing with them, you could have various other supernatural supernatural threats that seem to exist, like the science monster-based minions of vampires and fighting against them, maybe dealing with their own bloodlines and those that spawn them. Adventures like that would be very interesting, and this lends itself to be very episodic. On the other hand, you very well could come up with a more very powerful vampire that's pulling the strings, pops of other vampire lords, and would form a more cohesive, overarching storyline. The choices are really yours how you want to develop that, and if you really wanted to look for more stories, you could check out the novels of Vampire Hunter D for some more suggestions, but just keeping to the basic atmosphere and setting that the anime, set, the anime movie set up is a wonderful thing to do anyway. So let's move on from Vampire Hunter D and move on to talking about Project Echo. Now this was a series of movies from the 1980s that revolve around these main characters set in this fictional city. Now the city of Graviton City was in fact destroyed when an alien spacecraft landed there crushing it. And now there's this big crater there where the city was actually rebuilt. That's where we meet our main characters, Echo and Seiko. Echo is this kind of energetic girl who oversleeps very often and Seiko is her kind of ditzy friend who is her childhood friend that always goes together with her that is kind of like the nice one who always takes looks to the best side of everyone of course 
the big difference between the two of them is Eiko has superpowers. She has super strength and super speed. So she will race to school. The unfortunate part about her race is oftentimes it causes collateral damage because she's desperate to get there. So she will tear up the street in her wake. That is where we enter our third character, Biko. Biko is a spoiled rich girl that is a master at building and designing mecha. She is has this kind of crush on Seiko and wants her to be the only one that is with her. She wants to get Eiko out of the picture. So she continually uses some of her associates from the school and builds mech and has them pilot it, battling against Eiko whenever she can. Their battles cause a lot of collateral damage as it keeps going, and eventually there gets to be more aliens coming in and getting involved in it, and Seiko getting kidnapped, and the two of them sort of getting along to fight against it, but not yet. It's just this interesting mess that's actually really fun and entertaining. Now I definitely call it a mecha. There's the robot forces of the aliens, the robot forces that Biko puts together. There's a lot of mecha that just kind of have this underlying theme. I would call it kind of a fantasy. You could almost call it a superhero, but I just wouldn't I wouldn't quite call it that just because of the fact that Eiko has unique powers that they sort of hint on she's the daughter of some superheroes that I won't spoil that, but they hint on that she is, you know, inherited a lot of her abilities from her parents effectively and may have more in store, but she is very powerful. I'd also call it a parody. It's a comedy parody. It parodies a lot of things with superhero and other mecha anime, especially up until that point in time. And some of the humor actually does still hold true and is very funny still to this day. The fact is the way they built it is actually really entertaining and it's surprising how well it does hold up after even all these years. That is why, again, I call this another one that's a very classic that I would recommend you checking out and I rate it a five. These two anime movies were some of the earliest anime that I actually saw. So that is why that I recommend them highly. It, especially that they are in their more raw forms in comparison to stuff that you would find back in the day anyway. So let's move on and talk about it using it in your Bessem game. Now you're going to have your characters fall into three categories, and this will be a little spoiler. You could have a super-powered character similar to Eiko, a master of mechas similar to Biko, and maybe someone that has connections to alien forces and can manipulate them like Seiko, because apparently they're sort of kidnap her because they think her she's their princess and you can use that to your advantage and it's they're going to be their misadventures now you of course could have external forces coming along but it's going to be the tension between all your characters which will be the main driving force they will have pre-established sort of hierarchy that you will have the characters build before you start playing that's going to help advance this and you're gonna to have to think a lot of collateral damage is going to happen between them them fighting amongst themselves is going to be something you're going to want the players to do yes there will be other threats yes there will be other groups that might interfere or do things that they, that they will have to sort of get together to go against but they themselves are not going to be able to sort of get along very well with each other and that is where the kind of comical areas come into play that that funny part begins to develop and beyond that you can work on it. especially the collateral damage is one of those things about you know superhero and mecha anime that people don't talk about a lot regardless if you want to follow any of the movies or come up with a plot line of your own you just have to keep to some of those basics and you're going to focus around them on going to their school it's going to be schooling to graviton high that's where they're going to be going to. And then everything that happens after that is based around the fact that they are just interacting with each other more than interacting with the world. So let's move on to the anime series from last year. I do want to mention two from there again. Sky Wizard Academy and Prison School. Let's start with Sky Wizard Academy. It's a light novel and anime series that focuses around the fact that the humans have been driven off the land by these kind of armored giant bug monsters and that they have developed these floating magical cities in order to protect themselves and that wizards are developed there in order to fight against the threats of these bugs, these insects that are coming to still attack these cities. We focus on Kanoko, who was once revered as a powerful fighter and master of himself, but after some kind of incident, which they don't get into early on in the anime, he's kind of seen as then a pariah and almost that he was a betrayer, a traitor. So he is kind of pushed to the outside and doesn't do a lot, but eventually he is given a chance to teach these girls who are also kind of outsiders. A group of girls that each of them themselves is very unique and has unique abilities, but also are 
kind of hard to work with. They form a team that is very disheveled and very powerless because they just don't get along the way that they want. And he begins to come in there and train them and show them that some of the things that people thought were their weaknesses can actually function as their strengths. Now, the genres for this one, I would say it's a science fantasy. It's set in a kind of futuristic world, but it's with magic that magic has developed to this almost technological level of giving floating cities and the powers of wizards. So it is a science fantasy, of course. I would call it a magic-based anime. There is this overwhelming power of magic and spellcraft that seems to influx throughout the entire thing. The fantasyful elements are there, but it's the magic which sort of drives it home. I would also call it a harem. Now, this is very much so a light harem, as Kanoko doesn't actually, you know, want to get with any of these girls there, because he himself, he just feels of himself as more, he did what was right that people dislike him for, and he just sort of pushes him to the side. But all the girls in his squad eventually start developing feelings for him, because he is a great person, and a great teacher, and he's just sort of nice that they enjoy his company. I'd rate this one a 4. There were some flaws in it that did try to drive me away a little bit, but it was still a very good anime. Very high on my list of ones to recommend. Now, if you're using it in a Bessem game, I recommend 400 points. What you're going to do is you're going to form a team of misfits. A team that maybe doesn't always get along, has problems that they would be, that would be detriments to the overall abilities as wizards. And then you have an NPC like Kanoko come in and begin to teach them. Now, this NPC could definitely be the focal point of any kind of romantic relationships you want to develop in the group but the fact is it's meant to have him come in and start teaching the players in order to be a better team and to increase and remove some of the defects they have to get rid of some of the flaws that they've built into their characters and it's going to be important to have those flaws when people are building their characters now their adventures are going to focus around them and a team doing their normal schoolings doing their trainings maybe competing with other teams or dealing with some of the insects out there the threats that are coming in that they they might have to fight against them if they're forced to in various circumstances and it's their teamwork which will make a big difference. Now let's talk about Prison School. Now this is an anime and a manga that focus around Hachimitsu Academy. This academy that is very prestigious and in fact is pretty much an all-girls school. The thing is they've let five boys five out of the entire population of students. And the thing is, the rules are also incredibly strict and draconian, meaning that people are punished there very severely. All the boys end up getting into a situation where they are effectively peeping on some of the girls and are then effectively punished by being sent to the school, the prison area in the school where they are supposed to stay there for a month dealing with that problem there or they would get expelled. And so they get into it. And that is where the main bulk of the storyline is them dealing with their pers dealing with being in the prison at the school. Now for the genres for this one, it's definitely a school based anime. It's based around an academy. So everything is based around this idea of the school and going to school and education and severe education in a way. It's also a comedy. There's a lot of comedic situations. The characters are very unique and interesting and there is definitely this level of perversion and sexualization in it, but that often results in comedic effects going on. Now rather than calling it more of a perverted anime, because I think that really stems into the comedy, I would really call it more a prison anime which is a very unique kind of genre because it's similar to the school as that is a setting but they are set along in that prison area for pretty much the entire series the entire anime series for sure and so you're focusing around that more than anything else now i also rate this one a four there are some things that can you know drew you away some of the kind of perverseness that the comedy can stem from is, isn't always something that I think everybody would enjoy, but it is a very good series overall. Now, using it in your Bessem game, I would recommend 130 points. The thing about this is you're going to either have the characters be the boys, which are going to be ending up in the prison for whatever reason, or you could make it a girl that might end up there, or you could make one of your characters be one of the people in charge of dealing out the punishments and things like that, the people that are in charge of them and keeping them in line at said prison. It's up to you how you want to have the characters divided up, if you want them all in one group, or if you want to split the group up, and that way it's the relationships between them and the interactions which are going to be important. There are are going to be NPCs, but 
but it's this idea of them being sent into this prison for whether it's a week or a month or however long you think it would be appropriate for whatever punishment is going on that they're all being sent there. That is the bulk of the storyline, is, is going to be the interactions between them and possibly some of the NPCs which are going to drive it. So this is a very role-playing, interactive, heavy storyline with perhaps some kind of plans or goofy things going on along those lines that's up to your characters whether they want to develop that or not. And as I said, it is a very long-going manga series, so you could check into the future that it goes farther than the anime if you want more information about how things are going in the series, and maybe some ideas for characters you might want to introduce, or how some of the characters, if you're making NPCs based on some of the people in the manga slash anime, how they would react overall in a long period. So that's it for today. I went over four more series that I would recommend both checking out as an anime and using in your Bessem games, because hey, there are plenty of fun worlds that you can use. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave it in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel, the empire, and the work I do. If you want to show some more support, check out my Patreon linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell. <laughs>